Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in. I am Tully, and today is a very special day. Today marks the very first episode of Tully Rants On. Normally I stay away from controversial subjects, mostly because I know that people will just give me hate for trying to piggy bank on someone else's misery. But this situation is just so undeniably insane that I just had to talk about it. It warrants me ranting on it. It really does. For those of you who do not know, Total Biscuit is a games critic on YouTube. He is a member of a network called Polaris, which is a network of several YouTube channels, mostly dealing with Let's Plays and then other, other gaming content. There's also a couple of other stuff, like sketch comedy, I believe, or something, but whatever. Total Biscuit is a games critic. How that works is Polaris talks to devs, and devs give a review code and allow Total Biscuit and others to play the game, review the game, and monetize the videos. I'm not going to go into the whole thing about monetizing gaming footage on YouTube because that is a discussion that I am not, uh, not ready to. I'm don't know legal stuff. Just whatever. And I'm here because, as you may not may or may not know, Total Biscuit dealt with a very weird situation uh, a few months back. The Day One Gary's Incident, incident as it was called, where a game was released called Day One Gary's Incident. Uh, the network, uh, Polaris, I believe, approached the dev um, and said, uh, here, here is who we are. Uh, we would request a review code to review this game and monetize the video. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to put the video on it uh, so you can see. And what happened was the dev did not, the CEO of the company did not like the fact that, you know, the video was being critical of the game despite it being bad. The game was terrible. So he decided to use YouTube's broken DMCA copyright claim system to t forcibly take the video down. Obviously then he apologized when the internet fought back. And it happened again. In a move reminiscent of the ocean marketing debacle a couple of years back, uh, a couple of few years back, fun creators, the developers of a game called Guys of the Wolf, decided to use the exact same tactic. Now, let me give you some context on the whole thing. Guys of the Wolf is a game developed, like I said, by fun creators, a gaming development company based off Jordan on the Middle East. Uh, of course, like na normally, uh, they, Alaris, I believe, requested a review code and then gave a review code, told this kid did a review of the game, the link of which I won't be able to give you because it was taken down. If you search for it, I'm going to give you a link to the subreddit that's dealing with this thing, so you can then just check the links. What happened was Total Biscuit reviewed the game, and it was terrible. It was a god-awful piece of crap of a game, and anyone with half a, half a sense in their brains could see that. And just like last time, just like with uh, Day One Gary's incident, the video was forcibly taken down. Not only that, but two videos were taken down. The WTF is uh, video, and the research stream video. WTF is the more formal, while the research stream is a more informal first look at the game. It was an hour and 20 minutes or something. And so, here are the facts. Fact number one. Fun Creators created a game called Guys of the Wolf. It is freely available on Steam right now for more than $10. And they created a game that can at best be called Mediocre. Mediocre. And I say this because it was marketed as a full release. If it was presented to us in this state, but clearly labeled as an alpha or a very early beta, then I wouldn't be so critical. An alpha is not meant to be good. It's meant to be a proof of concept. It's meant to lay the foundations. But no. This game was presented as a full release. This, this is not an opinion. This game was universally panned by critics and players and gamers alike. The game is terrible. There is no way around that. Period. Second fact. Total Biscuit uh, did the WTF is video on the game. As usual... The process was followed. 
I'm assuming, of course, that they didn't break protocol. I mean, why would they? So I would, I'm assuming that what happened was the network uh, went forth and said, this is what we do. This is who we are. Would you uh, be so kind as to give us a review code or not? It's your choice. And however, if you do give us a review code, please be aware that we will be monetizing, yada, 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 yada. I'm assuming that the review code was given because I'm not, I honestly can't see Total Biscuit going around the law, but whatever. So what I'm assuming happened here, again, assuming, because I haven't, haven't had actually insider view of this, it's just me talking about it, is protocol was followed, Total Biscuit had its video protected by fair use under critique. It was a critique of a game, therefore protected by fair use. That's fact number two. He gave his opinion on the game. That's what a critique is. Fact number three. The video was up. Both videos. The video was up. Um, WTF is video. The research tree went up a few days later. I watched them several times because I really do love scathing reviews. And it just kept going. It was monetized. Nothing really happened. It was fine. It was okay. And then, uh, a few days ago, uh, February the 14th, if I'm not mistaken, a copyright strike was sent, and both of those videos were forcibly taken down by fun creators. That is a fact. Uh, VP at Polaris, and Make, uh, Maker Studios, I believe, went on Twitter to say that, yes, they can confirm that the strike was made by fun creators. Fact number three. I think it's number three. Yeah, it's number three, whatever. Next fact. Fun creators went on Twitter to deny they had, in fact, sent a copyright strike. Until, of course, Micro Studios, I believe, went forth and said, no, that was actually you. All right. Next fact. This is going to be, I'm not going to get my analysis on this until I have all the facts out. Next fact. After this entire debacle, of course, uh, after the copyright strike was sent, uh, I believe uh, Total Biscuit's legal representative, uh, legal representative sent an email to fund creators, uh, gently reminding them of what happened when day one Gary's incident CEO tried to, when the, when the CEO of the development company that had created day one Gary's incident tried to pull this same stunt, gently reminding them that it is illegal to put down a copyright strike on something that is protected under fair use. It's not correct. Of course, it's a very easy thing, especially with gameplay for it, but whatever. They agreed to it. They implicitly agreed to it, if not overtly agreed to it. To it. So, what they responded with, and I, I, let me just find this out. This video of them, I know if it shows otherwise. There we go. This is a, this is, this is that I'm about to read. Oh, Jesus, this is view image. Ah, oh, there we go. This is a transcript that's freely available on Twitter. On Twitter, just check out Total Biscuit's Twitter account. <clears throat> From Christian Baltok to info at funcreators.com. Hello. My name is Christian from the Cynical Brit, and I am writing in regards to your copyright strike in our channel for a critique video of Guys of the Wolf. I would like to remind you that content is that content is categorized as critique, it is protected by fair use, and therefore it is technically against the law to issue a strike on such content. We've had a similar situation back in October when a developer disliked what we had to say about their game, and they proceeded in the same manner. This is what came of it. This is a link. I can't think of a link, obviously, but I'm assuming that, yeah. Which is three and a half million people finding out about their attempt at censoring critique of a poorly developed game. The developer quickly apologized and removed the strike. In order to not have a repeat incident, I would kindly advise you to revert the copyright strike on the video as soon as possible. Thank you. Best regards, Christian. This is, and this has our fun creators answered. Dear Christian, thank you for contacting us. Yes, we are aware of what happened to Gary's incident developer. I am sorry about this story, exclamation mark. Fun Creators is a huge self-investment company, thus it will cost us nothing to send our lawyers to UK courts and make it a real accusation if you want. So please avoid the threat tune with us. Trust me, Fun Creator is bigger than a couple of videos. And this is where they change fonts. Well, please don't misunderstand our purpose, nothing personal. We like your channels and we are part of the community, see? We are not your enemies. We feel that somebody pushed you to make that video. Who is this guy slash organization? I wish you will cooperate with our investigation. 
For now, we will announce that we did a stri- we will not announce we did a strike. Meanwhile, let's talk and repair a relationship. Signed, Jasmine. Again, I am not going to analyze this. Next fact: after Total Biscuit and uh, after Total Biscuit, you know, reacted in the way you would um, expect, he posted it on Twitter. He showed this screen cap. I just read a screen cap. It's available on Twitter. And fun creators accused Total Biscuit of photoshopping in order to get to them. That's the next fact. Second, next, ugh, God, this, th- this is messing with my head. It really is. Anyway, fun creators is giving another. Let me see here. Whatever, I can't, I can't actually see this now. Here's what happened afterwards. We got to see on Twitter just how bad they were dealing with the situation. Whoever the hell is dealing with um, uh, the fun creator's Twitter account was being overtly aggressive. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say this in English. Accusing Total Biscuit and everyone around them of trying to you know, deal with them. Uh, throwing accusations of blackmail into the air and stuff like that. Until eventually... They dropped all pretense of civility. And once again, this is freely available if you look at it on Reddit. Send it e- sent an email to Total Biscuit saying that Fun Creators is bigger than your channel, uh, threatening legal action unless Total Biscuit deleted all his videos and his channel from YouTube and claiming that they would say that the message was fake if he posted a tweet about it. Which is quite an interesting strategy that, I, which is quite an interesting strategy, if I might say, one that I had never seen since kindergarten. Again, not analyzing this yet. Following this, obviously, they sent a rather cryptic message that Total Biscuit had to say, "Okay, what are they playing at?" That really looked like whoever the hell was in dealing with PR in that company had gone through a mental breakdown, and frankly, it was a bit creepy. I haven't been able to find it yet. I don't know, but whatever. It's on Twitter. You can see it. It's on um, Reddit. You can see it. Next fact. Afterwards, after like the February 15th or 16th, everything went silent. Uh, communications haven't stopped. I haven't seen anything new, so I'm guessing that both sides have gone back to um, legal matters behind curtains. What we did see, however, was fun creators desperately trying to do damage control by... Uh, inciting Total Biscuit to please be friendly or whatever. Again, it's on it's on Twitter. Next fact. The Steam, the Steam page for the game is ridiculous. Once again, this developer is a developer that does not know how to deal with criticism and therefore has been uh, deleting or outright banning people who had bad reviews of the game. To such a point now that they blocked the forums on the game to people who have only played the game. People who have only bought the game. Meaning that if you want to post about the game, you have to buy it. Hmm? That is a bad move. And it is indicative that they they are not operating with clean hands. Not only that, but once again, Metacritic has AstroTurf reviews. Again, this is nothing new. We've been seeing this for months, years now. It's not going to be the last time someone does this. Whatever. It's small name, big ego, all over again. What does piss me off, and this, this is another fact, is they divided the Steam forums, and they created a, a, a sub-forum called TB's Fan Club. Anyone who wants to... Uh, this, it's on Steam right now. If you go to Guys of the Wolf, actually, I'm just going to uh, check it out right now. Let's see. Go on Steam. Guys. Let's see here. Guys of the Wolf. It's currently 11... Currently 12 euros. 12 euros. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's see here, Community Hub. You have Community Hub on the game's Steam page. Here's what they have to say. New sections will be added without censorship. Please bear with us. It is a hard balance to keep the place restricted for normal criticism while many gamers want to support TV and cast their rage on fun creators. 24-7 censorship was a solution, but banning people it was against our wish. This just show you what kind of people we're dealing with. Accordingly, there is a new proposed structure for Guy's Community Hub. 1. Gamer Discussion. 2. Game Public Arena. 3. TB's Fans Hub. For gamers who want to cast their rage on us and criticize our PR team regarding TB's case. Freely available on Twitter and the internet. 
Way Toshiba service station. Find me, whatever. Anyway, freely available on Twitter on the internet is the the PR disaster that was. They openly accused Total Biscuit of blackmail. They uh, threatened him with legal action. They claimed that they were bigger than a couple of videos, which we'll get to in the analysis section, and a whole host of other things. And now they're saying the gamers are casting rage on them and criticizing their PR team. Again, last fact. When the game came out, when the WTF is video came out, someone who I believe was a troll, I'm hoping it was a troll, went onto their um, Steam page and said, you know what, guys, you know what, uh, there was this guy uh, who created a game called Day One Gary's Incident, which, you know, had the same bad press, and what he did was this, he issued a copyright strike and it worked. And fun creators said, that they didn't want to do it, that they felt it was better to just keep updating the game and make it a better experience. That was like January, or actually, no, I think it was like December or something. That is a good sentiment. I really dislike the fact that they released a blatantly terrible game, but the fact that they wish to update it and make it a better game is good. It shows that they are at least a tiny bit interested in solving their mess. But then, a few days ago, they edited that comment. We have screen caps of how the comment was before, but a few days ago they edited it. So instead of saying they wanted to update the game, what they said was, it only took us 48 hours to normalize the video's effects. By that, which I believe they're saying that they thought that they could just copyright claim the video and everything would be over. Those are the facts. Analysis. Point one. The game is terrible. The concept is interesting. I like, I love werewolves as much as the next person, and I would love to play out my power fantasies as much as the next guy, but the overall technical implementation of the game is god awful. It is, it's not even subpar. It's sub subpar, if even that. It is bad on every aspect, technically, sound wise, graphics wise. The game isn't even normalized, for God's sakes. I mean, normalization happens when all dialogue is presented at a constant, the exact same volume level. Which means that if people talk, they'll talk at the same volume. People whisper, they whisper at the same volume, or whatever. They don't even have that. And if someone doesn't even bother to normalize their goddamn voice acting, you know how bad the goddamn game's going to be. Overall, the game is just terrible. Absolutely terrible. And they really can't deny it. Again, this game was universally panned by critics. No one liked it. Uh, the only people who gave it positive reviews, and by positive, I mean positive glowing reviews, were obviously astroturfed. Obviously fake accounts. Obviously people working for the company, like uh, Sea Cancer, who went on Metacritic, shut up, Reaper, who went on Metacritic to claim that, to talk shit about Total Biscuit and talk about ethics or whatever the hell. Ethics. A guy about a guy working for the company talking about the game. Right. Let's talk about ethics, shall we? Secondly, the actual WTF is video. It is within the law. It is protected by gaming critique. It is protected by fair use claw, fair, fair use clause since it's gaming critique. In the day one Gary's incident incident video, Total Biscuit showed us how the process worked. Again, the network goes forth, the network Tells, gives a link to the developer of who Polaris is, who Total Biscuit is, what they do. Like Total Biscuit said in that video, it is unthinkable that they wouldn't just assume that he... It's unthinkable they would assume he would just say good things. He's a gaming crit critic. He's supposed to critique. If the game is bad, it's his job and duty to say that the game is bad. Because guess what? That's what a gaming critique does. A gaming critic does. That's the fact. You can't argue with that. You can't really expect us to live in an industry where only good reviews exist. And now this is what I really don't understand. I can compare this, I cannot compare this to Day One Gary's incident, because what happened with Day One Gary's incident was someone who thought they could stamp out criticism, failed miserably at it, and at least have the decency to back off and just apologize. In a rather bureaucratic way and whatever. But this, this is nothing like it. Not only did they stamp out criticism, not only did they overreact, they are acting unthinkably aggressive. They are lever leveraging accusations. They are throwing shit into the air. They're openly threatening Total Biscuit with legal action. 
and threatening to send their lawyers to the UK. Again, not understanding that Toll Biscuit lives in fucking America and is protected by Polaris, which is owned by Maker Studios, which is owned by Time Warner. Yeah, you wouldn't exactly want to go up against them, would you? Again, short sighted develop short side on the developers there. No, the fact that they would claim the fact that the email they sent was contained the line. If you post about this on Twitter, we will claim it's fake. What? Are we five? Are we in kindergarten again? Don't say I talked smack about you or I'll say I didn't do it. What? Not to mention that, but accusing Toro Biscuit of photoshopping evidence? You see that silence there? That moment of silence? That was my brain imploding. What? What? Do you even know who you're dealing with? Listen, if you want to leverage accusations, go ahead. But at least, I don't know. At least go the extra mile to, you know, I don't know, actually look at who you're leveraging accusations against. Because the second you say that Total Biscuits was playing Photoshop games, is the second that you lose any and all credibility. Hmm? Everyone on the internet knows that if you say this is obviously Photoshopped, you lose any and all manner of credibility. You lose any and all authority you've had before. All right? Welcome to the internet. And this is what really boggles the mind, is that they believe they believed that they could threaten Total Biscuit by saying that, oh, oh, our company is bigger than a couple of videos. Did they even see his channel? Are they aware of who he is? Are they aware of the weight he has on the YouTube scene? Because what I see there is either someone going completely psychotic and having a complete mental and nervous breakdown, or someone who honestly believes that they're bigger than Total Biscuit, in which case, what the hell are they doing in this industry? Total Biscuit is a massive channel. All right, he may not have as much subscribers as many subscribers as, let's say, Yogscast or uh, PewDiePie, but he does have a lot of weight. Your his critique can make or break your game. Make no mistake. And the fact that they would openly threaten legal action. Unless he deleted all his videos and his YouTube channel? Who are these people? I understand. I don't want to sound racist. And I know that no, no, um, phrase ever, ever good, ever, ever good, ever comes from that. Let me restart that. I know that no, nothing good ever comes from that phrase, but I don't want to sound racist. But, the company is based off Jordan, Middle East. It's a completely different culture. A completely different um, set of ideals, completely different upbringing. And I understand that for them it might be a bit difficult to comprehend how this system works. Because again, it's two different worlds. The West and the East, again, are completely different. And the Middle East is just a clusterfuck of whatever the hell is happening there. But again, this is what I have to say about that. They entered the gaming industry. They have a website that clearly says they want to revolutionize the world of games, caps lock. By entering this industry, they have implicitly agreed to the first cardinal rule of gamers. You are gamers. All gamers are born equal. You obey the same rules as we do. You obey the exact same guidelines as everyone else does. This is a democratic society with free speech. If your game sucks, it sucks. And people are going to tell you that. You have no right to go tits up about criticism and exploit a blatantly broken copyright system to go ahead and stamp on it. Not to mention that, once again, why only Total Biscuit? When it came to Day One Gary's incident, the only video that was taken down was his. Because it was the most uh, searched one, had the most views. And again, there's dozens of Let's Plays of guy, Guys of the Wolf out there, and only Total Biscuit gets taken down. It's like, if you want to stamp out criticism, at least go the extra mile to actually do it. Not just stamp on literally the most famous games critic on YouTube right now. Because that was just the dumbest thing you could have possibly done. And the fact that, they, again, don't tweet about this or we will claim it's fake. What? 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 What is this? What? Who are you? I mean, I mean, I mean it's beyond the point. What if they can claim that this was just a... a an intern going mad. No, 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 no. It's been several days. They have not done a single thing. Hell, Merge Games, I think, I think it's, yeah, Merge Games, the company that was going to, just see here, uh, that I think, uh, let me just see, I just want to see actually. Fun creators, fun creators, fun creators, fun creators. 
Merge Games Limited, the company that uh, was going to publish this game on other portals, had to come out and publicly say that they are not behind this, and this is entirely based on the dev. Hmm? Because people were giving them shit, and they had to openly come around and say, we are not involved with this. This is not our decision. We're just going to publish the game. That's it. We don't do quality control. I don't, I don't, I don't Okay, sorry about that. They didn't actually say that, but I'm assuming as a publisher, all they, all they do is, you know, they publish. Quality control is assured by the day, gaming devs or beta testers or whatever. They just had to go on Twitter publicly saying they had nothing to do with this. Because the attitude of fun creators was shameful, juvenile, and just downright stupid. Telling Total Biscuit to delete his YouTube channel and all his videos. What? Telling Total Biscuit that um, he, their company was huge and bigger than a couple of videos. What? Telling Total Biscuit they would take him to court over this. What? I understand that they might not be completely into this entire industry, but this is ridiculous. Like, this is completely ridiculous. This isn't even censoring criticism. This is you going out. And going batshit crazy. Again, I'm going to compare this to the ocean marketing thing. What was the ocean marketing thing? A couple of years, again, not a couple of years ago. I uh, see here. All right. What happened was a few years ago, um, a fan of Penny Arcade and a friend of, just what was his name? Mike. Mike something. God damn it. Mike Krahulik or Krahulik or whatever. A friend of Mike. Gabe Kahulik of Penny Arcade fame was, let's just say, mistreated by some guy called Paul Cristoforo, Paul Cristoforo, a PR representative of Ocean Marketing. Basically, the guy treated him like shit, and the, and the fan, the friend, went to Mike and said, would you deal with this? These guys are coming to PAX. Would you just deal with this? And what happened was Paul Cristoforo attempted to bully, I'm not even kidding, bully Gabe of Penny Arcade into submission. The entire thing spawned dozens of memes, the most infamous of which was perhaps the website on the internet comment. It was hilarious because the guy just started acting like he was the shit, like he was the best guy in the world, and then ended up sending an email like in the middle of the night, please Mike, stop this, you have the power. This is what happens when you piss off the internet. No one has the power to stop the internet. Hell, derp trolling right now is actually threatened the fun creators to go and shut down their servers. And as much as I hate derp trolling, because they did in fact, you know, take down SOE servers during a double XP weekend on planet side, I have to say, I wish they had attacked their servers, because this is ridiculous. This is their PR department going tits up over criticism and just behaving like they're the masters of the universe and they can do whatever the hell they want because we're fun creators. And you're just a couple of videos, and obviously not one of the most respected game, game critics on YouTube. I compare this to Ocean Marketing because there is no end game. There is no end game. They have screwed themselves beyond recognition. They have essentially made it in such a way, they're screwed. They are, they are completely screwed. There is no way they're going to recover from this. Everyone hates them. At, at most, they had like 26 players playing the game. It was just ridiculous. They made it in such a way that they are going to crash and burn hard. But the thing is, Total Biscuit has gone and said on Twitter that they he, all he wants is the strike removed and an apology. Same as what happened with uh, Day One Gary's incident. This is where I give my personal opinion on this entire thing. I don't want that. No, I want this company stamped on. See, maybe call it a Lusitanian thing. Call it a Portuguese thing. I don't like people taking away my rights. I don't like people stamping on my face with Das Boot because they don't like criticism. I don't like people abusing the blatantly broken. And again, I'm not going to soapbox on how the DMCA copyright claim system is bad. Google and YouTube need to fix their shit. We know it. Stop beating on the dead horse. Come on now. They, I hate it. It pisses me off to see someone believed to be the shit. I dislike self... I, it's not dislike. I really do hate, with all the fibers in my being, I hate self-entitled righteous assholes. People who believe they are owed something. 
people who really couldn't give two shits about the, their, their consumers as long as their bottom line is fulfilled. I am a gamer. I am a citizen of a democratic society. I have free speech. I should not live in a world where criticism can be blatantly and immediately taken down because you happen to own the intellectual property. Being an indie dev does not make you immune to criticism. If your game sucks, your game sucks. And it pisses me off to see someone who thinks they can not only take down criticism, but then just do and have a complete and total meltdown and accuse any and all critics to be TB fanboys. I'm, I, I'm not even paraphrasing. I'm quoting. <laughs> this is the ridiculous part. TB fanboys. This is the kind of attitude you would expect from someone on the image boards. From someone who has an ego the size of a small moon. They do not deserve the rank they're put. They tried to pull rank on Tonal Biscuit. Really? Really? Sega tried to do it. And then what happened? Polaris got involved. And Maker Studios. Sega lost. They took down two copyright strikes. Two. Sega. A Japanese company. You all know how they are. Fid all the fidgety Japanese game companies are with this sort of thing. And yet, fun creators... A company that we know almost nothing about decides to pull rank, claiming that they're bigger than him? This just boggles the mind. It really does. It's like, do they have a PR department, or is it just a couple of guys in the basement deciding that the world is against them? No. I do not want this company to issue an apology and remove the strike. I want this company to remove the strike, issue an apology, then be sued to the ground. I understand that initiating a vicious cycle where you stamp on someone because they stamp on you is bad. However, this is a sort of attitude that should be stamped down upon. The sort of attitude that should be removed from this world. And again, this is going to sound really bad, and it's probably going to be taken out of context, but these people should be put in camps. Common sense camps, where they are educated in such things as decency, cooperation, friendliness, fair play, and above all, common sense. Because Fun Creator seems to completely lack any and all of these things. They are a bad company. They produce bad games. They openly threaten someone because of criticism. They threaten legal action. They demonstrated a complete and total lack of knowledge on how YouTube works and what who Total Biscuit is by claiming that they were not only bigger than them, but claiming that he, they would be taking... The, Again, this is my mind is just melting. Claiming that they were bigger than him and ordering to take him down, ordering him to take down his channel, his entire channel and livelihood, or else they would issue legal action. This is the these are the actions of someone who has no idea what they're doing, because they don't get to win anything from this. It's like the whole the, the, that there is no there is no bad publicity thing isn't actually true in the gaming industry. It isn't. Your entire marketing, I mean, your entire sales are based around publicity. If the publicity is bad, no one is going to buy your game, period. That is, I don't know how to say it even more obviously. If no one likes you, they're not going to buy your products. Even after you buy or lock your forums to whoever the hell bought, bought your game, that's not going to stop a thing, period. The problem here is they don't seem to know what they're doing. They seem to be going through some sort of mental breakdown. I can see no other explanation. But that's just my idea, obviously. Not to mention that I want them stamped down and sued to oblivion because they are claiming all the tractors to be TB fanboys. What? This is the action, this is the sort of melodrama you would expect on Facebook from teenage girls, not from a gaming development company if you can call them that. It is shameful, it is juvenile, it is borderline stupid. In fact, it's not even borderline stupid, it is stupid. And not only that, but they've been acting as if they're the victim. They're claiming that they're being hated on. They're claiming that, oh, they're just a poor little company and Total Biscuit's out to get them and their fan and his fans are out to get them. No! You fucked up. You, fun creators, are a terrible company. You made a mistake. With the game. What you should have done is take the criticism in stride. Another thing for the common sense camps learning to take things in stride. 
You should have taken the criticism in stride and actually updated the game and made the game better. Not go apeshit and start throwing everything around, claiming that you're the best guys around. No. This entire situation is just beyond me. <laughs> Sorry. It's beyond me. I cannot understand how this is happening. It's like, why are they doing this? There is no end game. They're not getting good publicity out of this. Are they just trying to cause as much of a shitstorm as they can? For what reason? What reason could they possibly have? I honestly don't get it. It is beyond me. It is honest to God, beyond me. That's the rant. Thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned in to the next Tolly Rants on whatever the hell I feel pissed off enough. Goodbye.